Hi, Gary Chillingworth here for Air Gunner Magazine Shooting Country TV. Welcome to Life at the Range. We're in the conservatory and it's got absolutely nothing to do with the fact that my wife is currently at her mother's and she doesn't know we're in here. However, however if any of you do meet my wife, let's keep it between us. She doesn't need to know. So what are we doing today? Well, a couple of weeks back, I got a message in one of the comments on one of the videos. And I'll be honest with you, I've tried to find it, but I can't. And I apologize to the person who sent it. Um, I would like to mention you, but I've got hundreds and hundreds of comments and I, I just can't find it. And it was, Gary, I shoot at home. I can't get to a club. I haven't got time. I get some time in the evenings and all I want to do is shoot in the garden and get a bit of practice in. Any advice for short range shooting? And it's a brilliant question. More people shoot at home than in any club or go hunting. It's an age old tradition, but are we allowed? What's the law? So let's get into it. Let's do some short range shooting, nine, 10 yards. We're gonna talk a bit about bench rests and a few other bits and pieces. But hopefully today we're going to look at ways to improve, ways that you can short shoot range, short shoot range, shoot at short range, and that will improve your HFT. So gun fit and you know position and, and everything like that. But we're going to get into that as we get on. So welcome to the conservatory, welcome to life at a range, and let's get on with some shooting. Hi, sorry, just a quick one. Um, I've just had some information from my friend Kieran Turner who's helping to run the HFT World Championships this year in September. Um, the booking for the WHFTA World Championships, which will be on the 16th and 17th of September at Western Park, the booking has gone live Wednesday the 1st of March. Now this sells out really quickly. It's got 360 spaces. If you want to have a go, if you've got a sub 12 foot pound air rifle, you know, you've done a bit of HFT, come along. We're sharing it this year with the field target shooters for their English Open. So there's gonna be 500 shooters at Western Park at the game fair and it is going to be an absolutely amazing event. Your entry to the Worlds also gets you entry to the game fair so you can get to go and do all of that. Um, it's just going to be an absolutely brilliant weekend. I've booked myself in. I'm already going. I've got the hotel booked, so we're all good. So get in quick. Get your, get your application in, reserve your spot, book your hotel rooms because they will go really quickly. Um, so World Championships, 16th, 17th of September, WHFTA, Western Park. See you there. Okay, so before we get the guns out, let's look at the law. Now, today is the 1st of March, 2023, and I've downloaded this, which is Air Weapons, A Brief Guide to Safety from the Home Office, from .gov.uk. Now, it gives you some very basic information, but it's good to use this as a template. Now, the number one rule is if you are shooting in your garden, your pellet must never leave your boundary. So if you're shooting, I know, let's say you've got some waste ground and you're in your house, you cannot shoot out of your garden, across somebody else's garden, into, uh, into the waste ground. Your pellet has got to stay within your boundary and never ever leave. Now, I'll read these as it comes out here. It's offence to have an air weapon in a public place without a reasonable excuse. If this, uh, it is ultimately for the courts to decide what a reasonable excuse is. However, it might include carrying a weapon to and from a shooting club or taking a new weapon home from a dealer. Now, I'm going to attach that piece to the next bit. It is an offence to trespass with an air weapon. I hate using the word air weapon, air rifle, but it says here air weapon. Trespass, of, of course, we can't just pick up our gun and go wandering out into the fields. We're surrounded by fields here. I can't just go into the farmer's field next door and start shooting. I, you know, I will get arrested. My gun will get taken away, lots of problems. The issue comes to if you are not the owner of your property. If you are in rented or in council accommodation, 
you need to check with your landlord because shooting an air rifle in essentially a property that does not belong to you, rented council, there might be something in your tenancy that says you are not allowed to do it. I know a lot of council places do not allow air weapons. I don't think they can stop you from storing, but don't quote me on that because I don't know if it's that, but I'm certainly, but I'm sure they don't allow you to shoot them in the garden. So the last thing I would want any of you to do is to risk your tenancy, you know, your rent, your council accommodation by shooting. So if the property does not belong to you, it's okay if it's mortgaged because it still belongs to you. But if you are in rented or council, you need to check with your, uh, with your, the person who owns the lease, the person who owns the property before you start shooting in your garden. The next bit uh, is an offence to fire an air weapon with uh, without lawful authority or excuse within 50 feet or 15 metres of the centre of a public road in such a way as to cause a road user to be injured, interrupted, or endangered. Now, obviously, if you're shooting in a garden and there's no fence around it, and the pellet could go possibly go through the backstop and hit someone, you just can't shoot there. But let's say, for instance, you've got a nice secure garden, you've got fences all around, and you're shooting away. Bang, 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 no problem at all. But as people are going past, they're going, what was that? They can hear the pellet hitting off a, you know, a target, possibly ricocheting over the fence. Again, not allowed to leave the boundary. And that's where the interrupted bit comes in. If where you're shooting is going to cause people to hear you, to listen to you know, what's going on and be scared, you can't do it. There are a few ways around that, and we're going to go over to those in a minute. So basically... When you're shooting, you've got to do it silently. You've got to do it so that people around you aren't disturbed by it. Because otherwise, you could still get in trouble with plod. It is an offence to have an air weapon with no intent. Sorry, with no intent. It is an offence to have an air weapon with intent to damage or destroy property. Or to be reckless as to whether the property will be damaged or destroyed. Now again, we're not going to go around shooting out windows. You know, we're sensible air gunners but you can't use a fence as a backstop i actually know someone who got into trouble for this they were shooting in their garden they were sticking a a target on the fence at the back and they were shooting at the fence gradually damaged and destroyed the fence and also I'll be honest with you modern air rifles if it's not a particularly sturdy fence the round could the pellet could go straight through the fence and into the next door next door's garden so you cannot use a fence as a backstop. You cannot risk hitting a fence as a backstop. You've got to have something in front of it that will always stop the pellet. We've got to be really careful here, everyone, because the last thing we want is for anyone to fall foul of the law because it's bad for you, it's bad for the sport, it's bad for everyone. So download a copy of the rules. And if you're not sure, email me. I will happily answer anything on safety. Well, I'll happily answer anything. Um, life at a range at gmail.com. Gary Chillingworth 36 at gmail.com. Drop me a line and I will always try and help you if I can. Okay, so backstop. Backstop is really important. Basically, you've just got to stop your round escaping where you want to shoot at now we can shoot metal targets i mean i'll put a picture up here of a flop over target um that's what i use on the range but our nearest neighbor is half a mile in that direction our next neighbor is like a mile in that direction we're in the middle of nowhere but if we're shooting and we've got neighbors right on top of us that constant tink 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 of pellet hitting metal is going to irritate people especially if they're sitting outside you know trying to have their you know trying to have a cup of tea or do some gardening and an upset neighbor is not what you want because then they start making phone calls and whatever so what you want is you want an initial backstop something to hold your target and then something that will stop it in case the first one fails second level of redundancy now this is just a standard cardboard box and you can fill it with 
A multitude of things. You can fill up a carrier bag full of sand as long as it's completely full and the pellet will never ever get through there. As long as you, you know, repack every now and then. And you put it in a plastic bag so that the moisture in the sand doesn't leak out into the box. What I like are old towels. I went down our local charity shop. I think this one was 50p. They had a whole bunch of old towels. I like buying them from the charity shop because it gives money to the charity and I get some old towels which I can stuff my box with. So I've got loads of them in here. They're impacted down. So my box is absolutely full of old towels. Fold it up and then on the front, you can see I've got all these little zeros, but we're going to go into making the target in a minute. Okay, so we're now in our shooting position. We've got our peg. This is a, a thumper that I pulled from a, a car boot sale for about, I think it was about five, 10 pounds. Um, you need to make yourself a peg. You can put a board, you know, with a peg in it. Um, you can you know, get one of these if you can find one. They're, they're very, very good, but you've got to find something that will actually help you to shoot. So the target is out at around about 10 yards. We've checked our zero, it seems to be on. And now we're going to shoot. Shoot as we would with HFT. So we'll put three rounds down there. Okay, that's a bent pellet. We're just going to fire that one off. That's better. Okay. So, top line. We've already shot one. Well, oh, fractionally left. Wonder if we've got a bit of wind. Let's give another go. But that's why we're here training. Okay, next one. Okay, we're pretty much through. We're not touching. But again, fractionally left. We'll do one more. And fractionally low. Now, I wonder why we weren't getting dead centre every time. Well, that is because even though this target is 10 yards away, I've not set the parallax at 10 yards. Now, we've spoken about parallax in the past, but essentially, we've spoken about head bob. You know, so when you look through a scope, if you've got your target at 30 yards and your parallax is set at 30 yards, if you move your head up and down, the crosshairs won't move because it's parallax for that distance. However, if your parallax is set at 30 yards and you're looking at a 40 yard target and you move your head up and you move your head down, the crosshairs will move round about one mil dot in distance. That's called parallax error. Causes more people to miss in HFT than virtually anything else. Now I could set the parallax for 10 yards. This is the Optisan CP 4x16x40 scope. Um, it parallaxes down to, I think, about eight yards. It's really, really good. Optically, very, very clear. So I could set a parallax for this, and I could, you know, essentially just black, 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 and kill these targets every single time. But what I'm trying to train myself to do is to put my eye in exactly the same position every time. That's why after every shot, I lift my head up and I load. I'm not just sitting here going like that. I want to train myself into putting my head in the same position every single time. So let's fire another two on that top line. And this time we're really going to think about getting our head in the correct position. And this is usually when I totally miss. Okay, so that feels good. I'm just going to bounce my head a bit. That should be good. fractionally high. Maybe this is why I suck. Let's do another one. So now the next part of our training, next line down, we want to practice shooting up the peg, which is something that you will certainly get in HFT. So there we go, we're now coming up the peg, we're going to go the next line down.
And there we go, we're coming on to our third shot. Oh, see I pulled the trigger early on that one. Bad thing to do, I had my finger resting on the trigger, getting ready to shoot, and I pushed it high. Again, I can train myself out of that. So what are the other sort of things we might get in HFT? We might need to shoot on the other side of the peg. So again, we're going to go next line down, but now, see our grip is totally different. We're slightly off the mat. Next line down. But do you see how I'm gripping the peg completely differently to when I was here? I'm using a different part of the hand. Very low. Well, low and left. Final one. I suddenly realized I had a loaded rifle which I was pointing up and down. Not good practice. Okay, final target. It would appear that when I'm coming on the wrong side of the peg, I may be pulling slightly left. That's something to look at. The next thing we might do is have to come off the peg. What we sometimes call a spider hand. So we've got to touch the peg and we rest the rifle on the back of the hand. Again, another thing to practice. So let's come down. There we go. Now the way I'm sitting here, I can actually feel the pulse in my body and it's making the gun slightly wobble. So let's try and move my arm slightly forward, lifting up my body fractionally to try and take my heart off the floor. And there we go. So these are all things that we can practice in our garden at very short range. Hope it helps. <laughs> Do you like that? I've got a perfect stand for it. <sighs> so we've been shooting our box, and as you can see, nothing has come through the other side. So the towels and the rags and all that that were in it have done their job. Backstop, 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 really, really important. Now, these sheets, quite simply, they're a Calibri 48. I'll put a picture up of the Word document I used, and they're just zeros. Uh, sorry, no, they're letter O's. And as you can see, the pellet goes through, and you can make them bigger, you can make them smaller, all depending on what you want to shoot. And this is the other question, what do you want to shoot? I'm shooting this with an HFT 500 with a, an Optisan scope. Get something with iron sights. The Diana 54 iron sights. HW 77. Absolutely brilliant. I'll tell you what would be a good gun for it. Give me one sec. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I'm back. Something like this. I haven't thought about this in a long, long time. This is a gunpower edge. Gunpower edge? Yes, gunpower edge. And this is essentially a 10 meter rifle, a very, very dusty 10 meter rifle. Has a diopter sight, peephole sight at the front, diopter at the front. Look through it, it's got zero magnification and shooting against something like this, it will be an absolute challenge. In fact, if you'd like me to actually get this thing working and shoot it, let me know in the comments below and we'll, we'll give it a go. Um, in fact, don't even bother doing that. I think we're going to have a go with this. I think it could be a lot of fun.
Now, some people keep on asking about bench rest, and we are gonna be doing a bench rest video very, very soon. A good friend of mine, Jason Lockett, is one of the country's best bench rest shooters. But I work five, six days a week on nights. He works five or six days a week driving a digger, and he works during the days. So getting our diaries together has been a little bit difficult, but we are gonna get it done very, very soon. But I know absolutely stuff all about bench rest shooting. And it is an incredibly technical, um, oh, you know, any of you know anything about bench rest, you'll know that they go in and out to the duck's backside. But there is an absolutely brilliant resource for those of you who want, ben, who want to do bench rest. It's called Airability. Now it's run by my friend, Matthew Gleaves. It's a brilliant Facebook page, uh, YouTube site, website, and they, I mean, Matthew's probably, I don't know if he's the, one of the top, yeah, he's definitely one of the top, if not the top bench rest shooter in the UK. Um, shoots from a wheelchair, airability, but that makes absolutely no difference. He would kick the living daylights out of anyone. Um, the man is a machine when it comes to bench rest. So if you actually want to see someone who knows what they're talking about, when it comes to bench rest, check out Airability and you'll get all the information you'll ever know from cleaning your guns to setting up your rests. I don't even know the terminology, but we are gonna have a crack at it. Um, Jason's gonna come down, bring all of his kit and we're gonna, we're gonna do a little bit of bench rest. As ever, please like, share and subscribe. Um, it really is important to the channel. And, and thank you so much for joining us today. Um, if you want to see us shooting more in the garden, doing more of this kind of stuff, maybe with some different guns, let me know in the comments below and we'll, we'll get that done. Um, still trying to source a budget springer, a real budget springer. We've got the HW95, um, but that's not really budget enough for some of you. So we're trying to find a really, really good budget springer that isn't an HW99. Um, I love the HW99, brilliant gun, but I want to try and get something for under about 150 quid. Um, we'll have a crack with that and see what kind of accuracy we can get with it. Take care of yourselves, be good to each other, be the do person your dog wants you to be, and we'll see you all again on the range very, very soon. Ta-da.